Welcome to this introductory lecture on dimensional analysis. What we'll do in this video is just talk about why we want to do a dimensional analysis. There'll be separate videos that focus on the mechanics of it and how we use dimensional analysis. So let's just turn to the screen for a moment here just so you can get an idea of uh, why we want to do dimensional analysis. I have a picture here on the screen of a, a model aircraft, obviously, in a wind tunnel. You can see that it's mounted here and uh, the water, the, I'm sorry, the air is coming from kind of the front to the back here. And in this kind of wind tunnel test, they typically will measure the lift and drag on that scale model. Now, you know, this is obviously not the size of a real aircraft. You know, if you were going out and uh, trying to design a new aircraft, you wouldn't want to go out and build, you know, four or five different designs, full scale designs, fly them, see which ones work and which ones don't work, right? That, that would be very inefficient and unsafe. And instead, it's much more effective to build scale models and test those scale models, just as what you see in the picture here. But there are some questions about it. So first of all, you know, if your real aircraft is going to fly at 500 miles per hour, uh, in your wind tunnel test, do you have the air coming at it at 500 miles? You know, if, you're, if your scale model is, let's say, one-tenth the real size, does the air coming in, is that, should that be a tenth of 500 miles, so 50 miles per hour? Should it be 10 times 500 miles per hour, so 5,000 miles per hour, or some other ratio? It's, it's just not clear, right? We, do, we need to know how fast the air should be coming at the aircraft here to simulate what it's like for the real device. The, the big device we call the prototype, the kind of full-scale device, the common usage is called prototype. And then let's say we do figure out what speed that the air should be coming at this, and we measure the drag acting on that aircraft. Um, is that the same drag force that you would have in real life? Or is it some, you know, is it a factor of 10 smaller, a factor of 10 larger, or some other ratio? It's just not clear, right? We need to know um, how to take this drag measurement and scale it back up to the real life situation. So dimensional analysis allows us to do that. And that's really the perhaps the most powerful um, use of dimensional analysis is to be able to do scale modeling, to take real size, um, or prototype situations and either shrink them down or shrink them up. Sometimes we use dimensional analysis to take very microscopic uh, flow situations and make them larger so they're more convenient to work with and then do testing at that large scale and then scale the results back down to the small scale. So that's one uh, reason we want to use dimensional analysis. Let me, let me write these things down. So why use dimensional analysis? Number one is to um, to do uh, scale model experiments. Uh, another reason we want to do dimensional analysis is because it helps us simplify experiments. Uh, one of the things you'll see is that we don't have to use as many variables uh, when we do dimensional analysis. So uh, an expression that involves maybe five variables, uh, five dimensional variables, with dimensional analysis, you could rewrite that expression perhaps using two or maybe three dimensionalist parameters. So you, you can reduce the number of variables that you need to investigate uh, experimentally when you do dimensional analysis. So it can simplify experiments. And we'll do an example in a different lecture, the next lecture, to kind of show you how this works. A third reason you'd want to do it is you can present data more efficiently. So you'll see this also in the next lecture, but uh, when you gather experimental data, you can present it in dimensionless form in a much more compact way than if it's in dimensional form. So you can really uh, be very concise and efficient with how you present data. And then the fourth one, this one's probably less important for this course, but it can give you a better understanding of the physics involved in a problem. So what you'll find with dimensional analysis is you're, you're dealing with ratios, typically. And it's the ratio between certain quantities that's more fundamentally important to a problem as opposed to each parameter individually. That, we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, especially when we start investigating the, the Navier-Stokes equations from a dimensionless point of view. And you'll see where these ratios come from. But it, we can better understand the physics if we deal with uh, dimensional analysis than with just the original dimensional variables. So those are four good reasons to look at dimensional analysis or to use dimensional analysis 
and we'll really focus our efforts primarily on uh, items one through three mostly and we'll touch a little bit on item number four. So let me just say a few other words about dimensional analysis. Number one, you know, we're talking about it in the context of fluid mechanics, but dimensional analysis can be applied to any field. Um, we can do it for heat transfer, we can do it to, for solid mechanics, anything. Um, and it's because dimensional analysis focuses on the variables involved rather than the functional relationship. So what I mean by that is if you have a, a let's say y is a function of some variables x1, x2, da, 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 x to the n. What dimensional analysis focuses on is the variables like y and the x's. It does not focus on the function. Okay, so dimensional analysis only focuses on variables and really what it focuses on is the, the units or dimensions of those variables. Uh, it does not focus on the function itself. The functional form, like where this, what this function looks like, you'd have to get from some other source. You'd have to do some experiments or maybe some other analysis besides dimensional analysis to find out what that function looks like. Dimensional analysis only really focuses on the variables, and you'll see that when we go through some examples. Um, so just to kind of recap, uh, dimensional analysis is not just for fluids. Uh, we'll apply it here only for fluids, but it can be used anywhere. It's probably a tool that doesn't, it, it, sh, it doesn't get used enough in practice. Um, it's very powerful. It's almost like magic, and you'll see that in an example I'll give in the next lecture, but it doesn't get as much use as it probably should in practice. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. I suspect because people don't really understand uh, its power, so they don't really understand it, and they're not all that comfortable using it. So it's very simple, but the, the power of it's subtle. So anyway, I think uh, it should get used more often. And then let me just final, you know, the final thing I want to say is, you know, I, I've, I've just what dimensional analysis really focuses on. You know, I've mentioned here that it focuses on the variables like these, but really what it focuses on is the units associated with those variables. We all know that an equation has to be dimensionally homogeneous. What that means is the units in each term in an equation have to match up, for example, if I had uh, 10 kilograms plus uh, 10 meters per second equals 20 degrees Celsius, we know that that makes no sense at all. It's not dimensionally homogeneous. We have kilograms here, meters per second there, degrees Celsius there. It makes no sense at all, right? All of the dimensions, you know, the, or the units, kilograms, meters per second, those all have to be the same thing for the equation to make sense, right? Dimensional analysis, all it, all it does is just, uh, it's based on that idea that you, have, you can only add apples to apples. An equation must be dimensionally homogeneous. That's the fundamental idea behind dimensional analysis. It's pretty simple. Um, so, you know, that's, that's really what we're going to be focusing on here. Uh, and you can see a, a kind of a fun little example of this in the picture on the right-hand side, this sign in front of the small town, you know, the, the established in 1859, elevation over 8,000 feet, population of 118, uh, and then they just add it all up. Doesn't make any sense. It's kind of like this example over here. Clearly they didn't have any fluid mechanics people living in this town of 118 um, because they would have known that it needs to be dimensionally homogeneous to add it together. Okay, so anyway, hopefully you're convinced that dimensional analysis is going to be something worthwhile uh, really, the, the four things that I list here are the motivation for why we study it. Dimensional analysis is best explained through, an ex through examples. So uh, the next lecture will give uh, an approach for how we do dimensional analysis. The lecture after that will use dimensional analysis on the Navier-Stokes equation and the continuity equation. And then I have a whole bunch of examples where we use dimensional analysis, um, just so you can see it applied. They're all pretty straightforward. There's nothing particularly hard about this topic. Um, so anyway, welcome to, to uh, dimensional analysis.